In this video, we continue our discussion on functions of continuous random variables. So last time we had this scenario that I have a random variable x and I know the PDF of x. Then I had another random variable y which was a function of x, g of x. And I was interested in finding the distribution of y. And we introduced a general methodology to solve these problems. Basically the idea was well, the first step was to find the range of y because y is equal to g of x and we know the range of x, meaning that we know the possible all possible values of x, we should be able to find the range of values for y. And then we looked at the CDF of y. We said that by definition the CDF of y, f y of y, is equal to the probability that the random variable y is less than or equal to y. But the random variable y is equal to g of x, so this is equal to the probability that g of x is less than or equal to y. Now I have a problem uh, that is regarding ran the random variable x. And because I know the distribution of x, I know the PDF of x or CDF of x, I should be able to find this probability for any value of y. So I can find the CDF of y. And then in the last step, uh, if the CDF uh, is continuous, I can differentiate it to find the PDF of y. If it's, the CDF is continuous, that means that the random variable y is continuous. So I can find the PDF of y by differentiating the CDF. So this is a very general methodology and it should work for uh, any problem. Um, but today I want to talk about another method that is sometimes useful and sometimes it might be easier to apply. This method, we call it the method of transformations. The idea is that we find the PDF of Y directly from the PDF of X. So we don't solve the problem like this. We don't, we don't go through the CDF. We just directly find the PDF of Y from the PDF of X. However, uh, this method can only be applied if this G function, you know, Y equals G of X, the function g is a nice function. What do I mean by a nice function? I mean that it must be, first of all, a differentiable function. So g must be differentiable. And also, it should be either an increasing function, such as you know, this one, or, so let me put it here. So it must be a decrease, increasing function, or a decreasing function, or a combination of these, like increasing in some region and then decreasing and then increasing, but there must be only a finite number of regions. So if G satisfies these properties, then I can use method of transformation. So for example, if G, is, G of X is equal to X squared, you know, it's a nice function, differentiable, and the, the graph is like this, so it's uh, decreasing and then increasing, so we, we can use this method of transformations. So what's the idea? Let me just briefly talk about the idea here. And, and from the idea, we derive the formula, a general formula that we can use. So let's look at a function like this. Suppose that this is my g of x. And this is x. And this is y equals g of x. Now, I am interested in finding the PDF of y at this a particular value y. Now remember when we were talking about the PDF we said that we can find the probability that y bit is between y and y plus delta y. If delta y is very small we can write this as f y of y times delta y. Right? So we use this idea here. So suppose that this is delta y here so this point is here y plus delta y. Now, I am interested in probability that y is in this region. Well, how, how do I find the probability that y is in this region? I try to write it in terms of x. Well, if I look at this graph here, I notice that there are two values for which g of x becomes y, right? x1 and x2. And then I look at here, this is x1 plus delta x, 
and this is x2 minus delta x right so my claim is that probability that the y is between y and y plus delta y is the same as probability that x is either in this region or in this region in other words i claim that probability that y is between y and y plus delta y is probability that x is between x1 and x1 plus delta x plus probability that x is less than x2 and x2 minus delta x now what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this idea here i'm going to write this as fy of y times delta y is equal to similarly for x i can write this as fx of x1 times delta x plus fx of x2 times delta x now if i divide both sides by delta y i can write fy of y as fx of x and i can write this as delta just put it in the denominator so it's going to be delta y over delta x plus fx of this is x1 sorry x2 divided by delta y over delta x so if and if delta y and delta x becomes smaller and smaller this becomes the derivative right delta y over delta x the derivative g prime of x at point x1 and again this one becomes the derivative at point x2 so i have a general formula my general formula becomes this i can write this pdf of y as the summation x, x of x1 divided by g prime of x1 now the derivative could be negative so i put absolute value fx of x2 g prime of x2 right so i can directly find the pdf of y from the pdf of x now what are these x1 and x2 remember x1 and x2 were the roots of g g of x equals y so basically my general formula could be like this fy of y is equal to sigma over xk f x of xk over the derivative at point uh, xk but you know the absolute value of that and what are the xk's xk are the roots of the equation g of xa equals uh, y okay so uh, this is general formula and if it might look a little bit strange and maybe if you are a little bit uh, confused don't worry because i'm going to solve uh, one uh, example to show you exactly how we can use this method okay so let's talk about this here so this method of transformation and this is just more cleaner way of providing the formula again the pdf of y can be written as this sum okay so let's look at uh, one example here so x is a continuous random variable and we know that it has a pdf like this here and we are interested in finding uh, the pdf of the random variable y which is defined as y equals x squared okay so pdf of x this pdf you know you can plot it it's defined for all values of x the maximum value is at zero at zero it becomes one over square root two pi and then basically a bell curve function in fact this is the pdf for a normal random variable standard normal random variable okay so uh, y is equal to x squared now this x squared function is also a differentiable and uh, you know it's it's a fun nice function you know decreasing here and then increasing is differentiable in all r so there is no problem we can use the method of transformations so how do i use the method of transformations it's always a good idea to find range of y even in this method so uh, in this case x could be any uh, uh, can take any value from minus infinity to plus infinity so range of x is from minus infinity to plus infinity but y is equal to x squared so the range of y is all values from zero to infinity so that's range of y okay so for a y in this range i am interested in finding the pdf of y so the question is what is f y of y 
well so pick a value in this range and using our formula we should be able to find f y of y by summing or over all f x of x k g prime of x k now here g of x is equal to x squared so what is g prime of x is just 2x now the equation y equals gx if y is a positive value right what can I say y equals x squared then it has two possible roots right basically x could be either square root y or x could be minus square root y again if we assume that y is positive so this equation has two roots so this x1 is equal to square root y x2 is minus square root y so I can write pdf of y as fx of x1 you know, g prime is just we found that it's just 2x 2x1 plus fx of x2 divided by absolute value of 2x2 which is equal to x1 is equal to square root y plus fx of minus square root y divided by minus 2 square root which is equal to fx of square root y divided by 2 square root y plus fx of minus square root y 2 square root y and note that uh, if you look at the you know fx of x it was given here it's this function so it's equal to square root 2 pi e to the minus x squared x squared over 2 so fx of square root y in fact is equal to fx of minus square root y is equal to 1 over root 2 pi e to the minus y over 2 so from here I conclude that the pdf of y can be written as these two terms going to be the same so it's just going to be fx of y square root y over square root y again because these two are the same and this becomes 1 over square root 2 y 2 pi y e to the minus y over 2 for y you know, larger than 0 so I was able to find the PDF of y directly from the PDF of x and the idea was to use the method of transformations so maybe I just review it quickly the idea was that I was given y equals to x squared then I said that you know y equals g of x I solved this equation y equals x squared I got two roots x square root y minus square root y and then I said that f y of y must be equal to f x at, at the first root divided by the derivative of the g of x at the first root which is you know 2x two, 2 square root y plus uh, the PDF of X at the second root again divided by the absolute value of the derivative and just plugged in right because I have the PDF of X I plugged in and I have found the PDF of Y so this is the second method of finding the PDF of a function of a continuous random variable Y so I should mention that if you use the previous method you know our CDF method you should get the same answer but sometimes using this method of transformations uh, it's easier uh, for uh, these kind of problems okay thank you